It's time for today's episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast, recorded in front of a slightly tipsy studio audience at world-famous Champions Fried Chicken. We will have the latest on Georgia Bulldogs football, basketball, and recruiting. Watch live and send us your questions on the 11 Alive Sports page on Facebook. Be advised this podcast is off the record and not safe for work. Also, be sure to subscribe to the UGA Sports Live Podcast on iTunes and Google Play. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the UGA Sports Live podcast here from Champies on Baxter Street. Uh, my name is Roddy DeBulsi. I'm joined by recruiting superstar Jake Roos, five-star recruiting expert he is, and then, of course, Hall of Famer Jim Donnan. I have nothing cool to say about myself because <laughs> I have no awards like these guys do. Uh, but uh, we Generally do, good guy, we Roddy do, we, do, we know that's a lie, too. <laughs> we, uh, we have a great show for you. We're going to talk uh, uh, spring – UGA football spring practice, some of the things we've seen, some of the guys who are uh, peaking, some of the guys who are making a move. We're also going to talk a little bit about recruiting. Recruiting is nonstop. It's the, it's the spring, and there are a lot of guys who are actually coming to visit Georgia. You've spoken to a few of them. Uh, we've got more guys coming. There will be guys coming to Georgia this week. We'll touch on a couple of those. And we've got a lot to talk about. But, of course, the main thing we want to do this week, like every week, is to get to your questions. Uh, we need to get to more questions. We never get to all of them. So, uh, And Coach always tries to keep us on track, and we always – Flitter off. Really. If you got if you got questions, send them in. Uh, we'll yeah. uh, we'll try to uh, maybe make a big segment today where yeah, we try absolutely. to fit everything in. So uh, get a, get as many as you can in. There. Well, and besides, we really want to make it so that only one person's talking, so the rest of us can hit on this uh, sausage, cheese, and pickle plate that's in front of us. Uh, one of the best things you can get when you come to Champies. I don't know where they get the sausage from, but it is the best I've ever had. It is unreal. Um, it's a, it's a legendary uh, little plate there. It's half eaten <laughs> because you put it up <laughs> already before, before the show started. So uh, if you get a chance, come by Champions on Baxter Street and hit that up. Uh, Champions actually was feeding the recruits last Saturday when uh, Patrick uh, Garbin and I were at practice. They had a lot of recruits in, you know, some big name guys. And who do they, you know, they want to make a good impression. So who do they bring in to feed the recruits? Champions on Baxter Street. And so. you should know. That they champions, I believe, has catered every recruiting event Georgia's hosted this year. I believe that is on, that is wow. true. You got to go with your horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey. Which Coach K didn't do down the stretch. Oh, he did not. <laughs> You're right. Uh, somebody was pointing out that he'd only been to like two Final Fours in like 15 years. Coach K. Yeah. What do you mean to watch him or co- <laughs> coach him? No, to, to coach his team in it. It's been a long. In other words, or 12 years. In other words, he's. You always just assume that they're in it, but the two times we they went, they won it. You know, but they had been there. there to ask. I, I know they won the championship twice. Yeah, uh, but, but they've been there. Maybe, maybe they hadn't been as much. But yeah, maybe, maybe uh, Mr. Dave over there can find out for us and get us an idea of how many, uh, how many times has uh, Duke been to the Final Four in the last twelve, fifteen years? It's uh, been, it's been. But again, again, you go with, you know. I know one thing you? that's been pretty salient, though, is the team that won it the, the year before hasn't gotten out of the Sweet 16. So uh, that's been, you know, Villanova yeah. last year, North Carolina the year before that. I mean, North Carolina's gotten beaten the last two years by Texas A&M and, and Auburn like a drum, which just really surprised me the way they, you know, by double digits just got yeah. powerballed. Wow, that's, that's crazy. We've got the uh, Final Four coming up this weekend. Uh, I'm assuming Georgia's hosting more recruits this weekend. I would assume so as well. Uh, also, we'll be in uh, Charlotte for Rivals Camp, um, so uh, plenty of news Who coming out of there. Who are you going to see up there? Uh, quite a few guys, actually, especially a couple young guys. Um, uh, Kobe Pesor and Evan Pryor, two guys that I'm really interested right. in checking out. They visited Georgia recently. Uh, they'll be on hand. And another guy is uh, Trenton Simpson, who's a guy uh, that we haven't talked a lot about. I've spoken to him once or twice before. He's a, uh, a very versatile athlete, uh, very good running back. But uh, Georgia seems to like him at the outside linebacker position. And uh, he's got some big, big offers there. So I uh, look forward to speaking with Trenton. So th- this is another uh, K.J. Henry type guy, you know, uh, big, enough, big enough to play outside linebacker. But uh, Yeah, he's a little smaller than K.J., but uh, but but a, a hell of an athlete in his own right. I really like the kids. So what do they do after the testing stuff and all? The, do they just set it up for you guys to interview them, or you just kind of sm- We do the interviews around? actually before, and then they then they focus on camp, and then at the end of it they uh, hand out the awards, and then they break. And we've got another couple minutes, but, um, you know, it's nah, – it, If you're coming to the camp, we're going to get our interview in first. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. So, uh, speaking of, go ahead and get your questions in, and uh, we will try to get to them throughout the show. Uh, before we get jumping into uh, spring camp, I want to give a big shout-out to Athens Ford for sponsoring our show. Uh, Aaron Overhead Doors, also a big sponsor of the show and the website. Uh, Europe High, uh, 
fantastic. Been a long time sponsor. Been sponsoring before we. They were a sponsor of the old podcast before we brought back the new podcast. So Europe has been around a long time. Uh, Academia Brewing Company. Uh, we were out there last week. Uh, I left with a lot of beer. I uh, yeah. Well, anything that was they said, oh, this in the canning process. Anything they said might be scratched or dented, and some of them you can't even. They look they look perfect, but those I, guys are such sticklers. Like, oh, this one has a scratch right here. I, I'll take it home and make sure it finds a good uh, place. I so. recognize that after I left. <laughs> Ronnie's but, uh, got a, Ronnie's got a body shop at home for scratch beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I need a new uh, pantry. <laughs> yeah. I think you so are had, the pants, so my had, friend. We had an intern out there, uh, Riley Orr, who's working with us that day. <laughs> I'm like, carry the beer, Riley. <laughs> so she's got beer and I got beer. Oh, man, it was fantastic. Uh, of course, big shout-out to Cable East, who sponsors our show for no good reason. And 365 Game Day and uh, 11 Live. Of course, we're on 11 Live web page right now. If you give, if you have a chance, just go ahead and hit the like button and hit the share button. So uh, they are kind enough to put their journalistic credibility on the line by letting us have a show on their website. So uh, if you would, just uh, give them a like as, you know, just for them taking the risk. You know, I think that's uh, worthy of, you know, your – uh, little like button. Yeah, there, we're you know? far from a safe bet. So <laughs> it's just it's nice of them to do that. I mean, they actually have journalistic standards, unlike us, and they let us on their air, and we we appreciate it. So uh, actually, they had Paul Meharry on uh, TV the other weekend or yeah. this past Sunday. That's dangerous. Yeah, Man, that's sketchy. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I followed it a good job. So anyway, uh, I want to jump right into spring uh, uh, spring practice. I I want. We after uh, last Saturday, we got to speak to Stetson Bennett, uh, Tay Crowder, Isaiah Wilson, and Eric Stokes. And I want to say something about Isaiah Wilson. I don't think I've ever seen an offensive lineman in that good a shape. And I, we and you look at the all the uh, offensive linemen that come through the University of Georgia. And you know Andrew Thomas is in fit, but this guy there's there's no fat on him. I mean, he goes from shoulders to waist, even his cheeks. Where, yeah. I mean, from his cheekbone to his jawline, he looked like a wide receiver. I mean, just no fat on this guy. I've never seen him in that good a shape, and I would probably put it up against. I mean, he's he has zero fat like Ben Cleveland. Well, the thing about Isaiah was he was such a unique prospect and such a unique body, uh, even. Before all this, I mean, yeah. in high school, he was, uh, you know, just to, to be that large and, and to, to carry the weight the, the way he does. There just aren't many guys like that out there. And then, as you said, you know, to see him in the shape that he's in now, completely impressive. And well, the thing about it, though, that for all these guys that, that we, we don't talk enough about the uh, people behind the scenes, but uh, Coach Sinclair's staff uh, just want to uh, – point out that how good he is at taking what you have and developing you know from the standpoint of a football perspective and putting you in the best possible uh, potential to do what you can do to do your job and you know there's a lot of strength coaches out there in different ways to do it but you know our guys are really into it I mean our players really understand and believe in him and the staff and of course, our, our football coaches do too, so they give him a lot of leeway into what they, how they train these guys. But uh, as much as anything, everything we've talked about with, with Coach Sinclair is football-specific. You know, I just like that, yeah. that, that we do a really good job of that. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I think that, I mean, based on the results that you're seeing that he's produced consistently through these guys, one of the elite strength coaches in the Do you in, remember in the, how – Upset Georgia fans were when they didn't get uh, Scott the, Cochran. Scott Cochran, yeah, from Alabama. They're like getting Kirby. Scott Cochran's coming with him, you know. And then you know Cochran decided to stay, and everyone lost their mind. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, Kirby's already failed." Yep. You know, he's he hasn't poached the guy. He got Glenn Schumann. Who's that? Yeah, <laughs> how's that working out? <laughs> for like, you you're supposed to bring Cochran. You bought Schumann. Who the hell's that guy? And all of a sudden now he's your co-defensive coordinator, and you've got. Uh, a master strength coach, as we've mentioned about uh, Sinclair, and the job that he's doing, I'd put him up against anybody in the country. Sure. I mean, and again, I'm, I'm bringing up Isaiah Wilson because we knew he was good. He redshirted, and a lot of people immediately thought, oh, he's never going to make the adjustment coming down from Brooklyn. The heat's too much for him, and it was. Let's yeah, call it sure. what it was. He will tell you it, it took a while for him to get acclimated. He's bloody acclimated now. He had a great year last year. If, if he has the same year this year, he's going to be – and 
uh, when we're speaking to uh, Chris Morris and uh, uh, Van Pram and a couple other guys, one of them came out and said, uh, Coach Pittman thinks that if Isaiah Wilson and Andrew Thomas have the years he's expecting them to, he could have two first-round draft picks at tackle. Absolutely. And I thought, well, okay, maybe that's just a little, you know, recruiting talk. Sure. But – Knowing how well Andrew Thomas has played, I mean, he's a first-round guy. There's, to me, there's very little question. I think Isaiah Wilson has developed himself into that ability. He could play himself into that ability, and you could have two first-round draft picks to tackle and a duo that becomes legendary like, you know, um, you know some, of the, some of the great uh, other positions. You know, when you had uh, Seymour and Stroud together, you know, you had oh, guys yeah. like that. You just these, you know, when you had uh, – you know the, the the major backfields, Michelle and uh, Chubb. You know in the back, you know back there together. In other words, you could have. Yeah, you remember when we had those two first round. Yeah, drafts, you gotta you know? look. Yeah, I, I mentioned this on another show. Appreciate it this year. Sit <laughs> back and enjoy the enjoy it because it's this is a this is. It, it, hopefully, it will become more commonplace. Uh, that's what Kirby and Sam Pittman are working on. But um, yeah, it's a special time in, in yeah. the regard of the. Let's just don't go overboard here on this, though. I mean, the guy, uh, both these guys have the potential, but I yeah. mean, still, I would say they're you, going. You've got to go on and dominate your conference Absolutely. and play. I mean, he's made a big move from being a, a red shirt guy to starting as a true freshman, you know, and and uh, as a red shirt freshman, and certainly Andrew's done the same thing, but. You know, uh, uh, to be a first-round draft choice is pr- pretty it's strong insane. in the offensive line. So, yeah. hopefully that will happen. But I, I do feel like that there's not anybody going to have two tackles with that kind of foot quickness and size and length to go, uh, you know, to anchor the edges. But we'll, let's, we'll just have to see about, you know. Yeah, well, that's uh, why I said if he has the year that uh, – again, Pittman said it to this recruit. He's like, if he has the year that he's capable of, yeah. and we know he's capable uh, of it, then – he has that possibility. Pittman didn't say it was going to happen. He just said, you know, I'm trying to tell you what is a possibility for next year when I want you to come to UGA and play tackle well, for me. I, I, <laughs> I think that's a good point, and I don't yeah. want to rain on your parade, no, though, no. but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that <laughs> – I'm sure that Coley's telling Beck the same thing about oh. Fromm, and yep. it, and everybody's telling uh, Coach McGee's telling them about uh, Swift and all that. I mean, you know, hey, yeah, you, you got to use that to say if they do that, which you know you're building for the future. So I, I think that's well, you you I'm needed it for the tight be, end this year. You needed it for three wide receivers. Right. You know, you needed it for another running back who who left I mean, early. It so ca- kind of caught us off guard too. All of yeah. them coming out like that. So I know. mean, it, it happens. But my point is. I didn't really – I thought that it was Pittman just being a bit generous in his descriptions of Isaiah Wilson until I saw him on Saturday, and I'm like, wow, this, this, this guy this – could, this could actually become a possibility. Something else I want to mention that Isaiah Wilson said. We asked him, hey, you know, okay, you know, we don't get to see a whole lot of practice, so what's going on out there? Tell us about some of the defensive linemen that you faced. And he mentioned two, Nolan Smith and Jermaine Johnson. Kirby Smart was asked about those same two guys, or asked a similar question, and Kirby talked about how Nolan and Jermaine were hungry. I mean, he put so much praise on them for guys who've never played a snap for him yet. It was kind of un-Kirby-like because Kirby is very right down the line. Here's what this kid needs to work on. You know, he, he, he doesn't uh, – when he gives praise, it's deserved. When he gives criticism, it's also deserved. Well, right? and he, and, and – I, I and will, he went. He railed about. He's these not French a guy. Men. He's not a guy who is um, critical necessarily, and and he's not a guy who withholds praise. But he doesn't just give it freely. He's not out just. You, you got to earn he's it. Not, no, yeah, exactly. exactly. He's, he's not recruiting us. It. Just to tell you. But let's be good. real here. This is the number one defensive end in the country uh, uh, recruit, and the number one uh, junior college guy. So it's not like that they don't have a little bit of potential. But when you look at them on the hoof. And you see them work out, and uh, you know their presence out there. They they don't look like a normal first year person playing in your program. I mean, just like Cox and Anderson did last year. Right. I mean, you know, so, and then you add Webb and and uh, Nicobe Dean. I, I just think those guys right there have really made it for, to be an uh, you know the first year being here two months. I just think all four of those guys really uh, making a big move here to help our program. I heard uh, – I, I I'll tell this story. Um, I got a message from a guy who had an opportunity to go see Georgia practice and uh, uh, a time when we were not out there, and, and he said – he said, this Nolan Smith kid is different, man. He said, I haven't seen many guys like this. He said, he came on a bull rush at, uh, at Cade Mays, and 
he said he, he ran him over. And uh, he said he's given up 100 pounds. He said, he said look, he said, you're going to hear rumors about that. And he goes, I just want you to know that it is true. I saw it with my own eyes. So uh, the, the kid is. Yeah. And that bit, can happen, too. Sure. It can happen to anybody. Uh, you know, with anybody on the on But that, somebody's got to be able drill. to do it. <laughs> you got to be able to do it. And sometimes you lose your footing. But I just think both those guys, based on talking to Coach Lanning and, and Coach Schumann in the off season, and talking to Kirby a little bit about it, that uh, – you know, you got to find a place for these guys to get on the field. They're just too, too athletic. And uh, had a chance to uh, talk a little bit to Tyson Summers, who was here, uh, getting ready to move his family over here for spring break. And he went by Georgia, and uh, he was just the one thing that jumped out of, to him about our team was how the uh, the the uh, players, the first recruiting class that Kirby had, you know, from all those guys. Uh, really the one that had a chance to go for the whole year, that's right. what I'm talking about, had just really shown a lot of leadership and bought into, you know, the off-season program, maybe a little more than normal, have, having lost the, the championship game this year in the, in the SEC. But he just said that you can just see it's a little bit, a little bit easier – the way these guys work than maybe having to push them quite so much. You know what I mean? That Those are kind of guys that have been to the dance and seen how close you can be, and they know what else you got to do to get over the hump. And I thought that's good coming from somebody had been here and had left and come back and watched them a little bit. You know what I mean? Just to making that that's, point. That's great. You, you won't get that sort of analysis or that sort of uh, stuff anywhere else. So always be sure to tune in Tuesdays at noon to get stuff like that. Well, and you mentioned, uh, you know, the guys who came in in that class, and uh, I, I think that it's it's good to look back on, on that now that you mentioned it and, and think about, you know, where these guys are, how are they contributing. You're talking about in that class, Jake Fromm. Uh, you've, got, right. you've got you've um, got Robert Beal, who looks like he's poised to take a step this year. He looks, looks great. Fantastic, yeah. uh, Andrew Thomas, obviously, a, a, has been a star for you. DeAndre Swift. Malik Herring looks like a guy who's going to make a jump. Walter Grant's had a number of snaps. Jeremiah Holloman, it looks like he's going to be a, have a big year. Going to be the go-to guy. Isaiah yeah, Wilson. Lead receiver right there. Just keep on working. Monty kind of Rice. Is that? Come on. What? I mean, that was – Find the dud. That was – that right there, it, to have those that many guys who are those that large of contributors in that class, I mean, that's such a great sign for the you know the uh, ability to scout these guys out and know what they're going to be able to bring right, to the team as well. Right, and see what they're going to do for your program, but also – uh, believe in what you're doing, and uh, it just means a lot when you got a, a young quarterback like Mathis to have a guy like Fromm showing a little bit, you know, in the meeting room, on the field, everything like that, to, to really say, hey, this is what kind of behind the scenes, you got to do this, you got to do that. And the same thing with uh, all these defensive ends and all. And we, t- we saw about it last year. Uh, that Roddy did a good job at the Sugar Bowl talking about the way that Elargy had made it such a great – practice improvement but he'd hurt his knee and he, he got a chance to play in the game and, and I understand that he's doing the same thing in, in spring camp of uh, just being a guy that nobody really had seen making that kind of move and now he's doing it and you mentioned Robert Beal all of a sudden he gets in there last year gets his opportunity gets a sack and uh, I just think everybody has a tendency to talk about guys not being able to do something glasses half empty instead yep. of what they can do potentially, <laughs> potentially and uh, the athleticism on this team is out the gate yeah. and it's just going to be with all the competition some guys are going to get left a little bit behind but uh, and I, I see it in the secondary it's just unreal the difference between the first spring when Kirby was here when we were practicing out there at the near the softball fields and now this team here, uh, defensive secondary athleticism. Every one of those guys that are on the third group now probably have been starting <laughs> three years ago. They, uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. You say that. I hadn't thought about riding the bus out to the uh, out Millage Road uh, uh, for a while or Millage Ave for I mean, a while. When you saw, we saw Kirby taking uh, Devod Wilson over to be a star and how and working with him. Then he calls over uh, Mark Webb to do it. And you look at those two guys. I mean. Okay, those are going to be pretty good stars. And then we're, we got to speak to Eric Stokes Saturday, and uh, he was mentioning him. Oh, that, by the way, he was in that class. I didn't include him. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just an He's pretty good. It's funny. I wonder so who's he thinks the, the fastest, Stokes or uh, Campbell? Uh, Stokes says he is. Well, have you asked Campbell? 
No, he's a freshman. We don't get to talk to him yet. <laughs> no, he's no, he's no longer a freshman. We should be able to get to talk to him. Now. Yeah, sophomore. So. Well, you like to be negative, man. No, we'll <laughs> say it. <laughs> you know, here's we have been few, able in a few to, minutes. I would have watched practice. I would have uh, asked get him to talk to four guys. <laughs> now we haven't been able to talk to him. Yeah, I, all I can go <laughs> off of is times, times, uh, and. Um, I believe Tyson Campbell has the better time. He's got the well, 10 he's 3 got 9. A 10 3 9, and the best well, Stokes the has a 10 4. The t- he had a 10 3 in qualifying. They're both. Did he? Yes, he did. That's what We were walking out of the stadium. That was a 10 4. Hmm? That was a 10 4. Nice. I, re- I remember it very, very well. All right. We stopped and looked at each other. You're old. My mind I is am. still sharp. This is true. <laughs> Either way, it's uh, good to have him. It is. It is. You, you remember go. last spring? I'm going to bring up the old coach here. I stood up on a table for Eric Stokes when nobody else did. Nobody I, I said, said that. I've been watching this and guy. And Trey Hill. I tried to throw him under the table. <laughs> so it was and, good that you were on and, top of it. And Tyreek McGee. Yeah. But but I just think, uh, the, you know, the people have jobs out there and they're really good at it. And there's things that I'm not very good at. But I feel good about looking at a guy and trying to project him a little bit. And if they'll just hang with the system and use the coach. And, and I think there's a real benefit sometimes when you do lose the coach and that everybody's got a new lease on life, the people that haven't been able to play because the coach doesn't have built in his mind what you can't do. Right. So with Coach Warren coming in here, you know, and the structure that he brings in, the way he coaches, maybe some guy that hadn't got the look – that uh, he thought he should, it comes in there and just feels like no matter what I do, I don't have a shot. But now, you know, sometimes you get these guys make somebody might jump up. A guy like see, a guy like Speed, or I was just about to say, uh, Speed might. You also. know, who knows what'll happen? And I bring up the point, which I get on myself about. We had a center at, at Marshall that I never thought was very good, and Coach Self or line coach thought he was, you know, just. Just couldn't do it when the band was playing. And then when we left, the guy played two years. And, you know, they didn't lose a game for two years after I left. So we left him a few players. But <laughs> they, the point is, this guy ended up getting drafted and playing 10 years. So you, you look at it from that approach where, you know, Coach Warren brings in maybe a little different techniques and all that. You know, we still got Coach Smart out there. And, and uh, you know, I just think it's great that uh, – the competition is so good yes. for these different positions. and Well, I think that, that would be the way we'd sum up. You know, people say, what have you seen during two weeks of practice? And I've seen some ridiculous takes in the media about here's who's impressed us the most. You haven't seen enough to really say who's done what, you know. And uh, there was a headline the other day about uh, Stetson Bennett's following Jake Fromm exactly. I'm like, you, know, you don't know that. I mean, come He's on. doing what? Following Jake Fromm exactly. Following him exactly on Twitter or what? No, I don't know. I didn't read the story, but I'll just say there's some ridiculous. I saw where Fromm got hacked on uh, Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. He and Justin Fields. Justin both. Fields, same day. Really? Yeah. Was that they you, They both right? had password? I have to, it must have been James Coley doing yeah, it. You have to assume. I don't know. No, it wasn't me. I, I'm, as you can see, I'm pretty computer illiterate. Uh, when it's uh, people in the media have switched from – you know, reporting to analysts really quickly, and none of us that, that I know of on the Georgia Beat media are former coaches or former players at, the, at that level, you know. So I am always hesitant when we do any sort of analysis. We'll tell you what we think, you know, and we'll give you a, uh, a uh, you know, our obvious observations. But, you know, trying to get into the X's and O's, that's not our thing. That's why we have you on the show. We, Thanks. I'm, I appreciate I'm that. Just, we don't know it. We know we we can hit the obvious things, but I see a lot of uh, analysis out there that I think is just overwrought simply because, you know, journalists have a daily slot to fill, and so they do it a bit much. But the overall picture, the you know thirty thousand feet thing that you can look at this spring, what have we seen? Incredible competition at certain yet the depth areas on this team. Even on the offensive line, we're out there, and we see Jamari Sawyer working with the first team at right guard. He's, we know he's done some you know, right tackle stuff. Knowing what's going on in that offensive line, knowing what's going on with those uh, wide receivers in that first group there, knowing the secondary, the outside linebackers, you know. Yeah. Those are groups that the competition is through the roof, and then we see where they're a little thin. Yeah, but tight, tight ends, quarterback, running back. Defensive line. That's why you recruit. Yeah. So again, but I think the point that you make is very good, and I would amplify that by saying 
three straight classes that rank that highly, you expect them to have that competition. Absolutely. And there's not many mistakes in those classes. It might be a mistake from the standpoint of a guy hadn't developed or a guy got hurt. But when you can go back and look at these guys and see – that you brought them in with the potential to play this position, and now they've had that kind of success. Boy, that was a good list you just ran by us here, uh, Jake. So I think uh, the other thing that keeps rolling over my mind is that 14 guys here, how they're helping our team and where we would be if they weren't here now and were coming in 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 the summer. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. uh, it's it's pretty impressive, pretty and, impressive. And, and to your point, I mean, last year you were pointing out how last spring, Cade Mays looks good, Trey Hill looks good. Who did you need in the middle of the season? Absolutely, guys who had been here in the spring who performed for you, and you know, they all jumped and, up and played for us. You know, where were those? We've been without those two, and, and conversely, everybody kind of bagged on Jamari a little bit because he got here late and he, he wasn't able to come yeah. in and jump in as quickly. So I think. Uh, He's showing his potential now, and I remember both of you talking about how he stood out when you watched him at these different drills and oh all, on these bag yeah. drills and all. So um, there, there's going to be immense competition, and the thing that just continually just unreal to me is the way Kenley just keeps on holding them all. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, Keep it up, guard. Sullivan. You're the no, man. I'm, I'm, I love you know, it. He's a good old soldier, and he just does what he's supposed to do. And there's a lot to be said about that. Yeah. You know, to me, you look over there, and you got to – true sophomore center and you look on each side of you and you got those kind of guards that you know hey they've been to the dance and know what to do so we'll see how that works out but the the one thing that I want to make sure of and I've said a couple of these guys that asked me about our team is that you know there there's enough up in the air that we got to prove not to just give us the red badge of courage yet you know what I mean we've got to We've got to get some depth quickly at tight end in the summer. we got to get somebody to jump in there running back. Hopefully White can and hopefully Cook can and, and Harry will keep going. But, you know, that's that's a very much a concern area. And then inside backer, the talents there, we just got to find the people who, you know, make the plays and make the call. So, and backup quarterback, regardless how much you talk about it, that is one play away. We, we don't have the talent at the backup quarterback that we've had, but we do have some ability and potential there and hopefully find somebody return kicks and then uh, our punting game will continue to develop. But uh, we've got a, a pretty strong schedule too. I mean, you look at – Look at our – I think we played three teams in preseason top ten, uh, you know, plus Texas A&M. So, pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, speaking of uh, schedule, let's uh, – let, let's. Well, I want to mention uh, – well, I'm much counting schedule. Alabama in that championship. <laughs> yeah, there sure. you go. You want to talk about competition. Uh, I was looking at the Athens Ford webpage the other day, and we are talking about we're recruiting. We are talking about great competition. You know, uh, on their cars.com rating, they're 4.7. So that's over almost uh, 500 plus reviews. They're you know 4.7 stars out of five. Uh, Google, they're almost five star rated there with 837 reviews. 4.9 in DealerRater.com. Um, they are 4.9, you know, 60 reviews there. So you're talking essentially close to 1,500 reviews, yeah. individual reviews, and, and it's about four and a half is your uh, yeah, four nine, four seven, and if four, that were five. if that were a restaurant, so you know, you know me, I go, when yeah. I go out traveling, I search out restaurants. If, if it's got a four and a half, you can bank on it. Yeah, all right? that's a Michelin rating. No there, doubt, so. no doubt. Uh, they're the number one uh, Ford certified pre- pre-owned dealer in Georgia. They are also they've won the President's Award. Which goes for to exceptional customer service in both sales and service. They've won that at three years in a row. Point being, we talk about all the competition in Georgia. There ain't no competition when it comes to Athens for it. They are killing everybody. So they 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 own that spot like Andrew Thomas owns that left tackle thing. That's his. Nobody's coming for it. His his spot. And uh, they're just destroying everybody. Also, they have great uh, service. So if you get a chance, swing out by there and um, you know get your oil changed, get the uh, wipers replaced, uh, anything you need service-wise, they can do it. They're very fast and a great waiting room. I know it sounds silly, but you know you don't want to be sitting on some uh, oil-stained uh, chair that somebody got out of the dump. You know they have <laughs> free Wi-Fi, free coffee, cokes. You know a great waiting area. So it's uh, it's actually you can get your work done while you're getting your car worked on. So. A fantastic place. Swing by there and talk to them. Let's yeah. So no. Speaking of the schedule, um, uh, Georgia released today that they uh, have scheduled a home and home with FSU uh, for what is it, twenty seven and twenty eight. Yeah. And uh, 
I got to tell you, I, I'm thrilled about that. <laughs> I'm yeah, looking you know, forward I to it. I was concerned what I was going to be watching from the rest home that day. <laughs> Please, you're gonna be instead doing the show. Instead of playing bingo, I'll here. be watching the. You know, hey, that, that's a great, you know, auspicious move by us picking up those teams. Hopefully, FSU will stay down like they are. But uh, you know, Clemson obviously is a, a great uh, route. You know, I think Georgia and with Kirby's age and uh, Dabo, what's Dabo? Fifty. Uh, he's got to be right around there, I would think. I hope he, that's right. Guy, he be, he's going to be around forever. So I think with that situation, uh, you're going to have the normal recruiting deals. How old is he? Turns 50 this year. Come on, man. Come right. Coach. <laughs> Coach is on the ball as usual. But seriously, I think a very good job by Josh Lee and our administration, you know, looking out to pick up the games. You know, we got Oregon, Virginia coming up here in these games in Atlanta. And uh, – Helps you on the national recruiting base because we're recruiting guys all over the country. I, I keep reading about guys from California, and I, I'm bringing this up again. Uh, you really are smart if a program of national prominence is kind of up in the air like USC is right now. Uh, everybody's talking about it. is their athletic director going to stay? Is uh, is Helton going to have one more? How long is he going to stay as a head coach? So. You can go in those areas, and, and you're a team that's been in the hunt for the national championship the last two years, and you've got a great defensive background like Coach Smart. you got a chance to get into those corners and those people on the West Coast, right? No question. I, I think that you you got to be raiding it like the Huns this year, man. Yeah. California is wide open. UCLA is like in turmoil. Huns, eh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, UCLA is struggling a little bit. There's you Attila. <laughs> uh, you, yeah, USC is totally up in the air. Um, I mean, there's not really a standout program in the state right now. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's ripe for the pickings. Stanford. Oh, wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got to interject. You got to get into Stanford. That's, that's I got to interject this. You know what the <coughs> best thing, two things that Attila the Hun ever said? It's not a joke. Beware of a silent Hun. A guy that never says anything and is always in the background, you got to be careful about that. And then number two is avoid conflict if you can, which is a good way to look at a lot of things. If you can avoid a situation like that of course he had to get into a lot of conflicts because that was the way of the of the world back then yeah. but he could have destroyed the roman empire but he didn't do it he you know he, these people came out on the on the uh, battlefield these uh, different vatican people and asked him to you know to show some uh, reverence to him and he you know had a little white smoke out there but i guarantee you white flag i guess but yeah. he didn't destroy the roman empire and he could have See, you get history, you get football. And hey, I, and if anybody, a good book for anybody to read, I promise you, is Leadership Secrets of Attila the Hun. Really? Tremendous book. I'm a big uh, Art of War fan. Hey, I like Art of War, but Attila the Hun only lost one battle in his whole career. And that was a, somebody that sneaked in and learned his, you know, on the side. And it was actually a, an entree and learned how to go against his armaments and worked on the side and beat him one I time. Want, I want to uh, – this is a – that's a very interesting segue uh, because you wouldn't assume that we could tie Attila the Hun and uh, uh, the avoid conflict if he can thing in. But uh, Ronnie Brown here, who always has some great questions for us, uh, coming with one. And uh, I, I think that the, this one's really pertinent. He says – you know, because we were talking about uh, guys like Jamari last year, uh, you know, trying to find his footing, and, and he came in a highly rated guy. He says, uh, Coach, what kind of things uh, do you see coaches doing to avoid high-profile kids that may not be seeing the playing time they expect uh, from going into the portal after one year? How are coaches preventing? Well, there's a couple ways. That's good. Always running's on top of things. I think the first thing is – continually talk to them about where you are and how you stand and what you got to do to, to get to playing time and uh, and look yourself in the mirror and don't blame it on everybody else except yourself you know what I mean so you keep saying look you know you got this but this is what he's doing and this is what you got to do 
and the grass isn't greener if you're if you're not doing everything you can. Then the other thing is try to work in special situations for them where they get in on the pass rush or they get in on goal line offense or they get in in special teams where they at least get a feel for that they're doing something and practice to get them on the field. So do those two things. And, and uh, the best thing you can ever do to anybody, whether you're a, a manager or a boss or anything, is don't give false encouragement, but get realistic feedback that this is your opportunity and this is what you got to do. False praise is terrible. Don't tell somebody they're doing something good when they're not. So I think those things right there really are, are segues of uh, – I'm not seg- – they're, they're just kind of – building blocks of Kirby's program. They coach him up hard, but they give him good reinforcement, and they and the, the players know. I mean, you go out there, and you. but sometimes it's just so such a high wall to climb that that's why you maybe get in that portal because you just can't see yourself as, you know, I understand what I can do, and I understand what this guy can do, and I just don't see myself – you know, taking over for this guy. Yeah, and I see, too, uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, reasons. I think you're seeing guys transfer for reasons related to homesickness a lot more. You know, guys are coming across country a lot more than they used to, and they're going farther away from home. I think Luke Ford was a good example of that. You know, he was a guy who who came here, uh, maybe didn't uh, fully understand the role that he was going to play, but I think that being closer to home was what ended up kind of being the breaking point for him, and uh, obviously now he's at at Illinois, and uh, we we wish him all the best uh, there It'll be as well. interesting to see how he does there. You know, Illinois is close to being – Competitive, but they got a long way to go in that Big Ten. They do, they do. Uh, they they uh, added some great recruits this year, especially though with uh, with him. Um, let's see. Uh, Alvin Todd says, "What's up, guys? Warm weather right around the corner. Thank the Lord. Uh, I agree with you, Alvin. It's uh, very close." <laughs> he also says, uh, "This was this this cracked me up uh, to lead things off." He says, "Isaiah Isaiah Wilson's one of my absolute favorite players. He's the only current player I follow on Twitter. I must feel connected to him because of the hour long Christmas program commitment video <laughs> I suffered through. I think everybody feels a special." Play- for Isaiah for watching the poly prep Christmas. Well, he also figured out uh, how uh, Justin Fields and uh, Jake Fromm were hacked on Instagram. Apparently, the password was uh, QB1. (laughs) Here's another thing uh, from Alvin. You know, he's a a good example of being uh, akin to Demetri Evans of a guy that hung in here and didn't leave and didn't get to play as much as maybe he should have, but ended up with a great pro career and, and just a tremendous family now and doing a great job for the NFL, working you know behind the scenes. So uh, we didn't have the transfer portal back then, but I think Dimitri would have hung in there anyhow. I mean, that's what he looked at. You know, he was young, and he had Stroud and Seymour and those guys. But I, I just relate to that just because not talking about the past, but, you know, uh, there's – it's just an easier deal now to leave than it used to be. Sure. It's just easy because you know you got a chance of getting a plan next year maybe if you get the right lawyer and all that. And then the other thing is it's just uh, you see it in high schools. You see kids transfer and play in different high schools and – Going to all these clinics and stuff, and uh, yeah, that's unbelievable to me. I, I, I bet I, you know, I. Well, I mean, everybody's up in there now. Who's going to be going to the opening? If you don't go to the opening, all of a sudden, I was asking you about that yesterday, and I appreciate you putting up with my silly questions because I don't <laughs> keep up. But seriously, if you don't go to the opening, you're not supposedly one of the top players, or if you don't go to rivals, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, so it's, it's a ridiculous measure. It Look, is, it's the, there, we can, we take we at the five star challenge and the opening both. We take 160 kids each year. How many in the kids? whole country? In the whole country, how many? You know, how many kids are on rosters <laughs> There's across 3 the country? There's three million uh, high school football players. There's 160 elite prospects at, or elite players across the country. Georgia will graduate from every year this year about 115 D1 players. There you go. Just in Georgia. Now imagine when you get into Texas, Florida, uh, California. How many wow. you got? These aren't the things you can judge yourself off of. It's but again, but it's the idea. Well, you took the top 60. If I'm in that 160, then I'm the best. Yeah, sure. You well, know, we have a lot of kids who do not want to go to those things. You know, they're they're like, hey, I'm going to be on vacation that week. Uh, I'll you know? tell you, I'll t- you know who never went to one of those? Zamir White. Zamir White. Didn't, he's terrible. He didn't do he's any terrible. of that stuff. See, he didn't do any of that stuff, so therefore he's terrible. He <laughs> he just wasn't a camp guy. He said, I'm not going to do and it. we want him to come to camp. Absolutely. We, Please we lo- come to camp. We love seeing him, but if you're basing whether kid's good or not based on whether or not he goes to camp, you know. Yep. 
I mean, that's, that's almost as arbitrary as whether or not he has cleats. Same thing Nike. with the pro. <laughs> same <laughs> thing know. with the pro combine and the tryouts and all that. Absolutely. Stuff, you know I mean, but uh, it's just the other thing that is just the amount, the volume of information that comes out on all these kids before they've even hardly reached puberty. Absolutely. You know yep. what I mean? It's just I, and I, I have a very. Oh, he only runs a four six. I have or such he can a difficult only time bench press two hundred and twenty. I don't. I, I don't. I have such a difficult time getting into freshmen and even and sophomores. Even I, I think now once you start rising, you know, you're rising into that junior year. Now I think we can start making some evaluations and, sure. and really kind of uh, seeing where the future is headed. But that is way too early. I don't. I, I worry about these kids. I'm seeing ten. 12, 8-year-olds going to QB trainers and stuff like that. Man, go out. Let your kids have fun. Oh, yeah. Let them I be mean, kids. You got these same way with these little league but, baseball and all this stuff. And I'll tell you this. A, a word for the wise, word to the parents out there. If you want to give your money to somebody to train your 8-year-old, somebody will take it. I promise. <laughs> oh, yeah. I promise. Um, uh, all right, Robert, uh, I, I'm going to go with K. Uh, if, Robert, if you'll send me a ph- uh, phonetic pronunciation of your last name, I don't want to butcher it for you. Um, but you uh, 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 Right there. Um, but Robert K. says, uh, Brass Tax, what's the word on receivers at uh, spring practice? And that's a, a question that a lot of people have had. It was a question going into spring practice. Obviously, how would these uh, guys perform? You lost a lot out of that group this year. Uh, Roddy, you've been out there a lot. Uh, your thoughts? Kazmierziak. Okay, there you go. It's a guess. <laughs> hey, I, my last name is Nabulsi. No one ever gets it right, so I can strangle it. Um, I've been impressed, of course, by Jeremiah Holloman. Looks just like he did, but you know, last season. I think, as Coach said earlier in the show, he's your go-to guy. I think that's your, you know, wide receiver one. Uh, love what I'm seeing out of Demetrius Robertson. Although he's running with the twos right now, I think Demetrius is being groomed. I think he's toughened up. If you watch some of the videos Georgia puts out, this kid who's, I mean, he he's put on a little muscle. I think he's got the ability to be there. I love Tyler Simmons. I think Tyler's one of the fastest guys on the team, no question. I uh, want your speed. And then uh, seeing Kyrus Jackson out there running in that slot, I like Kyrus Jackson out there, which is very interesting to me is you'd have, aside from uh, Jeremiah, that is not, if you get those four wide receivers on the field, that is not a big wide it is receiver not. group. Definitely not. Now, we're all physical except for Robertson. He's getting better. The one thing I would interject about our – slot and wide receiver stuff. The thing that Coley brings in maybe that maybe uh, we didn't do with uh, Cheney and we could have is if, you, if you've got – this just little football one-on-one. If you've got three wide receivers in the game, mm-hmm. usually one guy's on the weak side right. one with the tight end or, or it could be the strong side, whatever, how you want it. And then you have a slot and a wide receiver there. And let's just say we call that formation uh, Trey – or something like that. Right. So, but you can have the same people on the field and call it trio, and then the the guy that was in the slot could be the outside guy instead of the inside guy, and the guy that was on the outside could be over on the other side where he was with the other guy where the tight end was, and that guy's over there where the slot is. So the, the yeah, inter- I followed all that. The interchangeability of right. these guys to be outside, inside, outside come inside just by the wording that you could use there and that that gives you a little bit of more flexibility like this guy might be better on the uh, bubble screen this guy might be better on the stalk block this guy might be better on the on the uh, fade this guy might be better on the back shoulder this guy might be on the inside release and do a stutter step I'm not trying to over balance here but i think with all those guys particularly you, you mentioned holloman you mentioned uh, Karras, you mentioned uh, Robertson, and you mentioned uh, Simmons. Simmons. I think all of those guys give you that interchangeability to do that. Right. And then you got Tommy Bush and Landers who give you some some guy that maybe just might be one one area player there to give you some more depth. And then they all frequent the special teams in in different areas. So then you bring in Cager and and uh, Pickens. So I mean. I don't think we're going to have a big drop off there as far as any in, in any area except maybe big plays because big play guy like you know we had those all three of those guys were big play potential yep. and maybe we'll see that but I, I would say this with our running game 
And one thing I always learned in, in the passing game, the way you score in the passing game is with play action passes. You don't score with show passes because when you drop back, the defense is seeing that and they're, they're geared into it. Where you hurt them with is when you fake up in there and then you hit the tight end in the seam or you hit a receiver, do a double move and all that. So We've our, seen them working on that a lot. Our play action passing game should be huge yes. with the capital H because – we're going to be so good at running the ball, controlling the line of scrimmage. They bring in an eighth guy down the box, seeing man coverage. So I can see a preponderance of big plays, not because we're so great at wide receiver or anything like that. We are pretty good, but just because of the mismatches that we can set up with our running game. To, I, let me interrupt you, but to that, that point, too much philosophy. There. <laughs> no, no, no. To that point, we've seen them work on that play action a lot in, in the time that we're out there. We also saw a lot of those play action passes go into the tight end. So a lot of passes to the tight end, you know, uh, especially in the red zone. I just do that for you. So I know, you. and I appreciate it. I'm just saying <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to see it because I know that some fans would like to see it more in the game. But to his question, we also have had a lot of guys uh, on the team calling out Matt Landers saying that he's having a good spring. So some of the guys on the secondary, some of the other wide receivers have mentioned him as having a good year. And Kirby, Saturday, Kirby Saturday, Saturday will be big. It'll be the first scrimmage, and you'll see how these guys focus a little bit. And I could see I could see us letting Stetson run some with the ones just to, to see how he can do, you know, because we know what Jake can do. But we got to find out what can happen if something happens to him. So, well, I mean, I mean there was – it wasn't that long ago you lost your starting quarterback eight snaps into the season. Yep. I mean, it, it can't happen. They're, they're going to protect it. But one of the things that I was going to give you is a little bit of a meeting that the Georgia Bulldog coaches have preparing for practice, and this is what they say. Well, okay, we got so-and-so start stretch, and then we got the media coming out there at 410 to 412, 422. Okay, what can we show them that really <laughs> screws them up? How can we go there and put that guy where we think they think he's second we're, team, but we're going to put him on first team? Or hey, we're going to put Jamari let, Sawyer at a wide out. Now let's put <laughs> let's put so and so over there doing. No, they don't talk about that. No. But uh, I think it's pretty funny though that uh, you yeah, get, and, and, and we do see them experiment with stuff, and sure. we report it. And what bugs me is that it's either our poor job of reporting or our readers' poor job of comprehension that what we reported that could be experiment becomes fact. Let's err on the side of that's our problem yeah, and not our just, customers. No, saying, well, it's our fault for not making clear. But then when it, they see it reported eight different places, sometimes it becomes, oh, well, Jamari Sawyer's now your starting right guard. But no, the he was out there one day. We all wrote about it, and it becomes an echo chamber, and everyone believes that, well, he's obviously won that spot. Well, you know, Ben Cleveland's going to have something to say about that. Cade Mays might have something to say about that. A lot of guys are going to have something to say about it. And the fact that he was – that's the only guy we saw working there with the first team that day. I would just that's say why you this. That's read every practice report because things change. Everybody – it's on the UGA site. This needs to wait to the week of the first game. And whatever Rodney says, that's what's the way it's going to be. <laughs> there you oh, go. <laughs> yeah. How many times was he right last year? I, I, did, I did get a couple right. I got some wrong, but I did get a few right. What? What did you get wrong? We don't have that kind of time in this show. <laughs> hey, you got uh, a lot right about now. this, though, because I'm looking on the screen here and I'm kind of getting a little mouth water. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, one thing that uh, people are talking about big time, uh, that's your pie's new craft series pizza. That's the double bacon BLT, Woo. ranch style marinara, mozzarella, and bacon, uh, finished with romaine, grape, tomatoes, and a house ranch drizzle. Uh, they load it up with the bacon for you. They they make sure they're, they're not going to skimp on you for sure. They any topping yeah. any topping you yeah, want. Did you read that or did that just come off your tongue? Hey, I just I know it, man. The My drizzle. <laughs> What's the drizzle? What do they do with? Oh, the they, they they give you the little uh, the little swirl around. Around there, it's like uh, it. a little artistic yeah. touch, but also really brings the uh, the pop on it too. So, and if you want to add any other toppings to it, because the great thing about their pre—I the, don't say pre-made pies, they don't make any pre-made, but they're pre-designed mm-hmm. pies. Like if you go in and get the Southern Heat, they say, "Do you want everything that comes on it?" So for me, I'm like today, I don't want any red onions on that. So no, thank you. And then they say, they'll lay it out in front of you, and they'll make it because they make everything right there. You know, and they do the dough, put everything on it. And they say, "What else would you like to add?" So even if it is one of their craft pizzas, you can say, hey, uh, throw in some jalapenos too or throw in uh, – I want sausage on that BLT one. You know? There you go. You know, hey, throw on pepperoni. They're going to do it. They're not gonna, and then you don't get to the counter and they go, oh, well, you added these and you took off these and that's going to be an extra $3 in topping. 
man, they're just going to make you a great pizza, so go by there and have Is one. Is that one price for everything? Yep. Uh, we had a question right up. Can you hit some of the opening questions? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's one about um, – uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 it was right at the beginning, and I can't remember it. Uh, wasn't this one, was it? Walter Grant? No, nah, go, go ahead and ask that one. Uh, well, uh, is Walter Grant being going to play both sides of the ball or seriously going to be looked at as a running back? Uh, I have not personally seen that at practice. Uh, it was, it was did he play he, in high school running back? He did, Yeah, and he was quite a good running back. I mean, but you have to understand, I mean, you have to think – he was playing at Cairo. He's six foot four in high school and looked like a giant. So uh, I'm sure he was a pretty effective running back uh, in high school as well. Uh, Gerald Shepard uh, wants to know: Is the wide receiver from Alabama going to qualify? That was it. He's talking about uh, George Pickens. Uh, Coach mentioned uh, Cajun Pickens coming in. That reminded me of his yeah. question. Um, I, I I'll tell you the latest I've heard on that seems to be trending uh, much better than it ever was. Um, I mean, if you'd asked us a month ago, we'd said no. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I said. When yeah, we he, said when no he, on the when, show. When he signed, I said, I don't think it's going to happen. But look, uh, I, I've, I've said I used to teach before I got into doing this. A lot can happen uh, by, the time, by the time May rolls around. Um, so I, I think uh, everything I've heard seems to be trending more positive for George Pickens. I do th- expect So you're basically it. saying if his English teacher has a new ride, then all of a sudden he's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody handing out rides, man. No. Oh, uh, uh, no. Jeff Dyer points out he was, uh, he was playing running back in the hype video. Uh, J- uh, Walter Grant was. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't. I don't expect that to be a, a big a, a move for him. Now, it, it's you no. Know, they do have some drills though, where yeah. where the defensive ends do a tackling drill, and one of the other ends carries the ball. Yeah. Or you do, so you do Oklahoma. You know, so and you don't always do it with a running back. You know, I think that'd be good if he could do it. I mean, hey, I like the. But we got the big kid coming in from Florida, running back too. Absolutely, absolutely, and and you know the thing about Walter is. Uh, I, it's not necessarily that I think that he'll be just overtaken and overlooked at the outside linebacker spot. There's a lot of competition there, and there's the opportunity to cross train. Why wouldn't you? Maybe if you had the opportunity, yeah. and he's a big enough body to put back there and let him block for you. He's just the old man river, though. He just does what he's supposed That's to do right. all the time. Just keeps on rolling. He's out there. You know he's going to do make the right plays and line up right and. There's something to be said about that. I mean, Kirby loves those execution guys, you know, that just do what they're supposed to do. And then Saul McKinley, Tate get, Crowder, yeah. Eric Stokes. I mean, you just go down a list of guys who were not highly rated. But Reed. Get the job done. Reed comes in. And, oh, this guy will never play at Georgia. Three Luckily, years they got his cousin, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and his cousin, though, yeah. He's God, we're there. idiots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but not to that point. I, I think Coach says, look, if you – with Kirby, he is demanding. And I'm not saying that Coach Rick wasn't or any other coach is not. I'm just saying that Kirby is very demanding. And we've been out at practice, and we've seen him. When a guy doesn't do his job, Kirby loses his damn mind. You know, And so if you want to come and play for Kirby, and there's a guy who's physically more talented than you, you can still play if you out-execute him to Kirby's standard. It's just the way it is. Yeah, And I, uh, he's not – He's not like a, uh, a guy in the NFL who said, oh, well, you know, we drafted that guy in the third round. We're going to have to put him on the field, you know, to show that we didn't make a mistake in the draft. Kirby doesn't give a darn where you were ranked or where you came in. That's why you see Saul McKinley holding off all comers at that left spot. Everyone always talks about who's going to take Saul McKinley's spot. They've been talking about it for two years. He's not giving it up. He may lose it for a game here or there, but he comes back and holds on right. to it. And I think the other thing, you know, we got our first scrimmage on this Saturday, but – Really been out there a long time. You, you, uh, the, the way we segment practices, we build up where they learn these individual skills. You go out there and do one on one, then you do inside skeleton, then you do inside run, then you do half line, then you do full team, but it's stud. And you, you just gonna have a lot more confidence executing your assignment, whether it's defense or offense or special teams, having all this training as compared to just going out there and having a scrimmage the second or third day, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think the other thing we do with our scrimmages, which I like, is we segment it a lot more than we're just running ten plays and see if you can make a first down. And we do a lot of first and ten, you know, where you run first and ten, four straight downs, or you go – third and medium, four straight, or you get in the red zone and all that. Because you're only allowed so much contact now in spring, you know. You can only have so many days of that. And it's good for protecting against, you know, head injuries and all that because it's been proven 
that the most guys get hurt is in spring practice because it used to be just a bloodbath, you know, because you only – you just go out there and go hard all the time. I mean, that's just the way of the life. And it they're hungry. Be, I mean, you just scrimmaged every second, and uh, that's where you had so many injuries. Hey, I want to mention something here for about the Aaron Overhead Doors. <laughs> I saw this review on their website. Uh, this is from uh, Matt. It says, amazing customer service. Uh I would give Aaron over at doors 10 stars if I could. I was blown away by the exceptional customer service I received. Um, 10 stars. 10 stars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, wow, then someone else says five stars is not enough. You know, I'm like, okay. Uh, best service from start to finish. The service, uh, the confirmation service calls to text messages about my technician on his way. Various courteous, professional, and fast technician. All in all, uh, great service and a wonderful company. And if you've, you have, if you've ever sat around and waited for the charter guy to show up, you got to appreciate the confirmation text to let them know you're on your if way. I can tell you. If you could be at your home anytime between 8 a.m. and 7.35 right. p.m. Yeah, we're, we're trying to replace a stove in our house. We've been trying to replace it for two <laughs> You've months. You've been talking about this on the show. Yeah, and all of a sudden I get a call from the contractor for this major company, not an employee of the place we bought it from because we had to return the one that we bought and buy a much more expensive one because of some issue. And now the contractor calls me and says, yeah, uh, it's going to be an additional $520 to install it. I'm like, that's more than the cost of the bloody st- – <laughs> yeah. So I'm just saying that uh, Ryan Lucia and the folks at Aaron Overhead Doors are customer service people first, and I really wish that they installed gas ranges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would just be my preference. Man, that's but, pretty um, – y- Yeah, so I was – and you're not going to run into those surprises with Aaron Overhead no, Doors. That's no, the that's, big thing. That's, that's the point. So when you get a chance, uh, reach out to Ryan Lucia and the folks over there. You, you can book online. If you're like, hey, you know, one of the things I'm dealing with is they say, we'll call you the day before and tell you when we're coming. I'm like, what kind of garbage is that? How about you? I'll tell you what's good for me. I mean, I've, I've, I don't do a whole lot of work because I have the staff that does all the work. I just sit around and make jokes on Twitter all day. That's kind of my job. But count, count what the if, money. What if I'm busy? Yeah, I got <laughs> money to count. You know, I got uh, I got I got free food to eat from Champions. I mean, there's this, it's a it's a tight thirteen hours a week that I'm yeah, working. You yes. Know? So, uh, but if you get a chance, uh, so we get the the folks at uh, Aaron Over at Doors. You can uh, sign up with them online, and it's a free visitation. And while we're talking about great service, I um, also want to mention our, our friends. At, uh, excuse me. I'm about to cough, and I don't want to do that in front of the uh, thing here. You get a chance. We went out to Academia Brewing Company last week, and we had a um, a great time while they were canning all their beer, and it was phenomenal. Um, got a few scratch and dents, so it made it worth it. Had a great meal out there. We had that Cerebus sandwich, the three meat sandwich. You get a chance. It's fantastic. I have folks coming in this weekend. Uh, my wife's best friend from college. Where are we going to take them? Academia. Academia. Also, by uh, pie, or we might be here. But if I'm just saying, if everyone, I'm trying to impress them a little bit and say, hey, y'all come to Athens more often. I'm going to take them over to Academia. And if okay. you happen to be in town for Classic City Brew Fest, I bet, uh, I bet Academia will have a pretty uh, strong there, presence there, out that yeah, way. Absolutely. Uh, especially with all the cans coming so out. See if we can get like three questions in a New York minute. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Richard Olenek, he says, uh, Nate McBride, is he going to be a special teams player for four years? Hard to tell. I mean, Nate. Keeps working hard. Uh, you know, I, I would think he'd be a guy that this is the year for him to make a break. You know, I mean, I just from standpoint of, you know, he has potential, but, you know, there comes a point where you got to deliver, and uh, he definitely is a good special teams player. Uh, he says, Coach, uh, thoughts on N'Kobe Dean during spring practice? I really like N'Kobe. I haven't seen him in the contact part of it yet, uh, uh, but I, I do feel like in his knowledge of assignment and proper technique puts him a little bit uh, edge-wise over some guys coming in this early because he's so intelligent. And he's got tremendous speed to go with his, you know, uh, strength. He's not as, uh, you know, overwhelmingly big guy, but I can see him making a lot of plays for us. Uh, and then the last one here, we got uh, Ab Harding. He wants to know, what do we make of Jermaine Burton's tweet? Jermaine Burton, uh, four-star receiver uh, out of Calabasas, California currently, uh, formerly of Mary. Marietta High School, went to Hapeville Charter for a little while, was at IMG for a bit, uh, former Miami Man. commit, and uh, said, he, graduate? he says uh, uh, that he is going to commit uh, on G-Day, on 420, which is uh, also Terrence Edwards' birthday. So um, he said, "That's uh, Terrence Edwards' birthday." He said, "He said it's Terrence Edwards' birthday. He's played a, a pivotal role. He's been a, a big help in my training, and so uh, I want to commit on that day to honor uh, Terrence Edwards." 
That'd be great. I um, how do you rate the guy? Uh, I think he's a four star for well, us. How do you rate him? I, I, li- I, li- I like him. Stars. Your stars mean a lot to me. <laughs> I like him. I like uh, I like Burton. I do think he's a good player. I think that he is. Is he a take for us? Uh, that's Come that's on, jump out on a limb. Come on. I'm going to say no. Uh, at this moment, at this moment, I think that that Georgia's That's just, enough for me. I think Georgia's got some some other op- options out there that are a, a little bit stronger. The kid Look, up in in uh, Maryland is a receiver, right or not? Mm, the got kid, running back up there. Yeah, they, yeah, they got the running back up there. They got a couple of D linemen. Um, we'll have to loop back around on that one. I'm I'm not sure, but uh, Burton at, at this point, I'm going to say I don't I don't think Georgia's the landing spot. Uh, they have been frequently mentioned. He, but the thing about him um, is that he's played all over the country. This is a kid who uh, I think is comfortable with the idea of not right. exactly you know play, playing close to uh, where he's from originally. He's he's been all over. So um, I, I'm not uh, leaning that way right now. I am going to uh, be reaching out to Jermaine. Hopefully, we'll get something back from him very soon. And I did want to mention too. You mentioned earlier that you, both of you were talking about this idea of coming in and winning your spot, and and how Kirby preaches that. Uh, if you didn't get a chance yesterday at UGASports.com, go over and read the story I did with Jalen Kimber because I thought that he gave some of the best quotes that I've had in a long time yes. uh, on any recruit. And he said basically, he said they told me nothing's going to be given, everything has to be earned. You're going to have an opportunity to play. We can't guarantee you will. If you do what you're supposed to and you compete and beat your guy out, then, yeah, you will. And he said, I love that approach. Uh, no sugar what coating. Does he play? He's a cornerback. He's a six foot one out of Texas. Um, a guy I expect to make a move in the rankings here very soon. And yeah. um, I, I think that he is. Uh, I think he's a very good player and, and had some great things to say about Georgia. We also saw a kid who said, uh, I got an offer, but they want me to come to camp. Yep. Yeah, Keandre thought, Lambert. So I'm like, hey, that's being honest. Yeah. You know, we, 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 Think well, you're you good can, enough, but we want you to come to you campus. Gotta and show have them. Them. You got to do it. You got to have them on campus. And but see, a lot of kids, a lot of schools don't tell them that. They'll tell them that, but the kid never says it. You know, or it's not like a they. The kid knows he can't commit on the spot, but they're like, look, they offered me, but they want to see me in person. In not camp. so fast on the commit. Exactly. Right, right, exactly. Yes. Answer on Coach it, K. What uh, did I say? Yeah. So uh, our buddy Dave, uh, to lead off the show, we had this question uh, under Coach K. Uh, Duke has. Been to 12 Final Fours and won five titles. Uh, only one uh, title while Dave McMahon was president, however, and that was the 83-84 So how many in uh, the title. last 12 years? In the last 12 years, uh, they've won one title, uh, and that was 15. And um, I think they've been to, I want to say, two Final Fours in the last 10 years. So it's been. That's what I said. Yeah. Look at you. You know your basketball. I, no, I, I heard somebody else say it. You know, people talk about Coach Cal, you know, $9 million. I mean, he's looking in the rearview mirror on uh, some things on a lot of coaches, but not on Coach K. Coach no. K makes more than nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly. Uh, he is. And uh, nothing against it, but uh, we had, uh, if you go to UJSports.com right now, if you look on the front page, there are there is a great video of Anthony Edwards, his highlights from the McDonald's All-American game. If you were not excited after watching those highlights, then you were probably dead. Check the pulse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that kid can ball. So, uh, Congratulations we, to Coach Fox, too. I'm happy for him. Absolutely. Going to, uh, Cal. Absolutely. And so, you know, everyone's excited about Auburn basketball. Hey, you know, with some of their Georgia players. Did I ever tell you about the time I went to Cal to watch spring practice? No. I was out at Stanford, and they were off. And so I went over to Cal. And uh, – the guy was great. The coach was great. And he said, look, we're not going on the field at 4 o'clock and all this. So I just kind of was hanging around. <laughs> There's three guys and two girls up in the stands are smoking weed right there. <laughs> it's 1977. <laughs> right there. You know, hey. The, um, 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 I started saying, hey, you big Cal fans? You Cal Bears? Or, but it was right there in the stands. They I probably didn't know it. what stadium they were in. And they were, <laughs> this, this blew me away. Oh, man. Fresno State. It's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Cal Bears. Absolutely. Um all right, go, so we just banana slugs. We just got our uh, we just got our practice times today. Uh, we had uh, ten minutes, four eighteen to four twenty eight, um, and we got Coach Smart after practice. So make sure to get over to ugasports.com. dot oh, yeah. We'll have your full practice. I always like that when you put it up on uh, live. You know, Kirby after practice. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, uh, and and that video is always free. We'll have that on our uh, uh, Facebook page as well. So uh, make sure to get over and check out all that. We'll get Coach Smart's comments. Uh, we'll also go through and um, uh, you know have the the full practice. 
Marcus Notebook, and uh, we'll get you all covered there. Who all is covering today? You and Dash and uh, Garvin? Patrick, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Patrick's kids yeah, will be there. So. so Yeah, so we'll have, we'll have four <laughs> reporters out there. His kids go on the practice field? I doubt it. Not today. He's, he's, he's just, start, wa- he's just watching. He's linebacker. <laughs> hey, we got, we got Trip s- Garvin carrying, we got real, carrying the ball. We got the real, <laughs> real practice watcher today, though. Uh, Josh going out to practice and take <laughs> some food to the coaches. Yeah. Ah, there you go. So, Josh Champies, again, best place you can go if you're trying to Seriously, begin. Seriously, how about this crowd in here on a Tuesday at lunch? Got to love it, man. It is loaded. You come join mean, us. Come, out. come got, on down here. Georgia football staffers in the back of this place right now. I mean, we got that, but we got all these people coming in to I'm just saying, hopefully listen to the show, but they're enjoying all this champions and a lot of different types of yeah, stuff. We're, we're going to wrap it up there because it's time to eat. We got this plate in front of us. We're going to jump into that. We'll see you next Tuesday at noon. Take care, everybody. That's it for this episode of the UGA Sports Live Podcast. Tune in next week for more Georgia Bulldogs news and notes from Athens.